Okay, good morning, everybody. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning, everyone. Calling the roll for the Tuesday, September 8th Board of Control meeting. It is now 11.02 a.m. We have Del Miller. Here. Nan Baker. Here. Jim Boyle serving as an alternate for Dan Brady. Present. Nicole English serving as an alternate for Mike Dever. Here. Lee Tucker serving as an alternate for the fiscal officer. Here. Mike Chambers serving as an alternate for Armin Budish. Here. And Lenora Lockett. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, at this time, uh, I'm going to make a motion to- Mark Greenfield. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes of August 31st, unless I hear otherwise at this time. Nothing? Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Nicole English. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, public comment? Do we have any public comment out there? Okay, hearing no public comment, we're going to move on to contracts and awards. The first new item, item BC 2020-508, Department of Public Works, submitting an amendment to a contract with Terrace Construction Company, Inc. for the Bradford Road Relief Sewer and Pump Station Elimination Project in the city of Rexville for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $40,151.50. This is Nicole English from Public Works. This is the um, final amendment for this construction project. And the main reasons for the amendment are final quantities. And then also there was some um, items that were requested by the, at, the city, um, at the city's request for work on the easement area. And then on the last amendment, there was some uh, quantities that were zeroed out on accident that need to be restored so we can pay them on the back end. This is 100% uh, out of the sewer district user fees for the city of Brecksville, no money from the county. Oh, here we go. I'm done, if anyone has any questions. Listen, go ahead. I was just gonna let everyone know, please, please do not put yourself on hold. If you have to attend to something else, put yourself on mute, but please do not put yourself on hold. Thank you. Or hang up and call back in. It's very frustrating. Okay, are there any questions from Nicole on this item? I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. The next item is a two-part item. Item number BC 2020-509, Department of Information Technology. A, submitting an RP exemption on requisition 2559, which will result in an award recommendation to Diversitech Resources Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $105,294.88 for a state contract purchase of three Tableau Creator add-on licenses, 245 Tableau Viewer licenses, licenses, eight Tableau server core license upgrades, reinstatement fees for eight Tableau server licenses, and 20 Tableau desktop licenses, and it's for the period August 28, 2020 through May 25th, 2021, and B, recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Janelle Green on behalf of the Department of IT. Um, this is a split purchase between IT and HHS IT for um, the licenses and support as Andrea stated earlier. Um, this is, um, these licenses are for um, reporting tools that are used throughout um, some HHS um, reports as well as on the, on the IT um, behalf. And uh, we are expanding that for some viewer licenses to allow additional HHS uh, users to be able to view the reports that are compiled by the HHS IT team. Thank you, Janelle. Are there any questions on this item from the board? Yes, this is Dale. And my, my question is, 
how it was determined that the HHS portion would be allocated 46% to the HHS levy and 54% federal. Um, yes, that's not something that we determine um, for the index code that we apply, um, that we have for the usage for HHS. Um, that's how the split is determined by that index code or accounting unit, as it's called now, um, that is utilized for the payment of these services. So uh, who is it that makes this determination? I would have to say it would be in the de in the fiscal department. We do not make that determination. Okay. Uh, uh, I I don't have any need to hold this up, but I would ask if you could uh, contact the appropriate person in the fiscal office and uh, send me a report on how this was determined. Sure. Thank you. Okay, any further questions on this item? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Dale Miller, second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Item BC 2020-510, Department of Information Technology, submitting an amendment to a contract with Maine Sale LLC for staff augmentation services for the Enterprise Resource Planning Project. It's for the period September 17, 2018 through August 31st, 2020, for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $68,000. Uh, Janelle Green on behalf of the Department of IT. Um, this uh, $68,000 is to um, pay out the final invoices to Main Sale. Um, we were short on funds from uh, the July invoice and also needed to pay for the award um, as completed in August. Um, there were two FTEs that were left um, that we needed to pay on this contract, and um, we're just, again, tying out the... Um, the invoices that were received from um, main sale for this services. Okay, thanks, Janelle. Any questions from the board member? Uh, this is Nan Baker. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Sure. Uh, for we have two conflicting um, answers, and I believe I know what the answer is, but just to confirm for the record, on the backup, it's asked on page. 20, are the services covered by the original ERP budget? And the answer is yes. But then on the request, it says for additional funds. And then I think on your answer, it says this is additional expense. So for the record, this was not included in the ERP uh, original budget? No. So we made, uh, so um, there have been reports for updated numbers to where uh, we had anticipated it would be around um, $45,000 on the previous report. So um, we looked at what the spending was and had some estimates of how we would have spent in August and um, basically adjusted the numbers for that. So um, this was not included in the original. This was not included in the original. And is this coming out of a contingency fund or is this just added to the total? This is added to the total. Okay, uh, no questions, thank you. Any other questions? So, so this is Dale, and to uh, follow up on, on uh, Councilwoman Baker's questions, uh, what additional services were required that, that were not anticipated in the original budget that were paid for by, by this, this money? So um, when we look at the hourly work for, um, this is for staff augmentation for, the, for this particular contract. So when we looked at um, the hourly work that was done by the, and performed by the contractors, um, there were some overruns on that. So um, we, are, we adjusted um, the numbers based upon that fact. Um, and we've had some of the main sale contractors removed from this contract. And so we still had two uh, contractors that were working um, primarily on the um, 
the rollout for the uh, strategic sourcing and the contract management portions that we're still doing work um, with the training and implementation um, for those modules um, that still uh, needed to be paid out from this contract. So you're basically saying that some of the implementation required more more hours of, of uh, contact services than what was previously anticipated, but it doesn't involve any additional staff. Right. This was um, previously reported in a forecast to the um, finance committee before. Again, um, we had uh, we had forecasted about forty five thousand dollars, and um, when we got the when we got the invoices, we looked at it, and it was um, more than what we anticipated. So um, this, we want to use this fund to close out that contract. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? Hey, if I may follow up with that, sure. uh, Nan Baker. Um, do we anticipate that we will be short for other future services that will be needed? Um, how do you know can you, when you give an estimate as to what the cost will be and then you have an overrun, is this something that you anticipate will continue? Um, and definitely um, not on this contract. This is just to close out this particular contract. We've received uh, final invoices, and um, we will not have any cost uh, overruns, and we hope to not have cost overruns in the future. So um, in terms of this contract, this is it for this one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any final comments on this item? I just want to confirm that on the backup where it says that the original ERP budget, it's, uh, it's covered. That was an error. That should have been known. Yes, it was. It should have been known. Just, okay. So if anybody's reading this as a public record, that should have, the answer to that should have been no. That is correct. That was an error. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mr. Boyle? Hi, this is yep. Jim Boyle. Yep. Um, so, Janelle, who, who are these two employees? Um, these are contractors. Um, one was Evie Miller and the other was Connie Geddes. All right. And so where, where are they now? Are they no longer involved in the project, either from a main sale or from a county side? Um, Evie Miller is no longer on the on the contract, and uh, Connie Geddes has rolled over to be um, an employee of the county. All right. So, so, and 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 I'll express a little frustration with kind of the intermixing of the consultification of the of the work and then the county side of the work, and the and the movement of the main sale folks from both sides. So, just so that I'm clear, there are, there were two employees in this situation, two consultants, I should say, who were brought in under main sale to do work for us. And of those two, one of them is still in the employee of the county, correct? Correct. Okay. And and is she is this person is she she interviewed for the position, the job was posted, the person interviewed for the position and was and I mean in all the other aspects? Yes. Okay. So uh, this is Dale, and uh, I would I would just add that that we have had a difficult time filling some of these uh, IT positions with with county employees, and and uh, the opportunity to get a few of the uh, main sale consultants who. Uh, have already worked for us on a contract basis and uh, and already know the project. Uh, it it's a positive opportunity. I don't think we should uh, uh, consider it a bad thing. It's a good thing that that we've been able to take advantage of some of these opportunities. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, hearing no yep. for any further comments, Jim. No, I'm fine. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I agree with Dale's comment. I mean, there is an economy of scale that comes knowledge of the material that is certainly helpful. 
Okay, well, based on that, I'm going to make a motion to approve this item. Do I have a second? Uh, Jim Boyle, I will second. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I heard Mr. I will second. Okay, Mr. Boyle seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Item number BC 2020-511, Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, submitting an amendment to a contract with Us Together, Inc. for interpretation and translation services for the period September 1st, 2017 through August 31st, 2020, to extend the time period to February 28th, 2021, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $80,000. Good morning, Paul Porter, Health and Human Services on behalf of Cuyahoga Job and Family Services. This is an, extended, an extension for our contract with us together who provides interpretation and translation services across several HHS departments and other county offices, including Ohio Means Jobs, the Board of Revision, the Treasurer's Office, and Public Safety and Justice Services. These additional funds are specific to Cuyahoga Job and Family Services. The other agencies have enough funds remaining in the contract to get them through this 228 of 2021 period. The reason we're doing this uh, short amendment is to give us time to get an RFP completed for this service with the start date of March 1st of next year. Thank you, Paul. Are there any questions from the board on this item? Uh, this is Nan Baker. Um, more of a comment. It's um, concerning, again, to see an extension of a contract that has already ended. And that ending date isn't even close. It's August 31st. Well, I take that back. I guess we are close. I'm sorry. I take away that comment. Certainly. Thank you. And if, if I could add that it was our goal to bring this to the August 31st meeting, but we took a look at the uh, calendar and how long it would take to get an RFP out for this one, and we made the switch from 12 months to six months. Um, so that's why it's appearing today instead of August 31st. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any additional comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second, Nan Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Item BC 2020-512, Department of Law, recommending an award on a purchase order and enter into a contract with Omer Byrne Omer and Byrne LLP in the amount not to exceed $4,950 for mediation services rendered in connection with Court of Common Pleas case number CV 14-831933 Mary Lynn Gatozzi versus Treasurer of Cuyahoga County and it's for the period March 29th, 2019 through January 17th, 2020. Hello, this is uh, Greg Huth of the Law Department. Uh, as Andrea said, this was a mediation in a, a, a um, class action suit that was brought against the county regarding unclaimed funds. Uh, we received the invoice, regard, despite the fact that the services ended around uh, January this year, we didn't receive the invoice until June. It took us a couple of months to get all of the right docs into Infor, and then we found out at uh, the end of, end of August, rather, that it come to Board of Control for approval. So we got it on the agenda as quickly as we could. Okay, thank you, Greg. Are there any questions from the board members on this item? Uh, this is Nan Baker. Um, to the director of law, is, is this, would you consider this an appropriate request um, given the dates of 32919 and 117 2020? Would, would you have thought that there would have been a better way to ask? for these funds or is this just the way it happened and we have no control over it? Uh, well, this is this being below 5,000, we actually didn't think it had to come here at all. Okay, so why, and I'm sorry if I missed it, but why is it that it's coming here? 
If it's below 5,000. I think, but I'd, I'd defer to Lenore on this. I think it's because most of the work occurred in a prior fiscal year. Uh, that why? Lenora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity. The d determination of whether it needs border control, yes, in general, if a contract is under 5,000 and submitted prior to authorization of the services, it would not come here. However, if, if it's submitted after the department has authorized the services and the Office of Procurement and Diversity does not have documentation of authority before the services were authorized and provided, then we send it to the Border Control. Okay, that's a good, thank you. I appreciate knowing that. Sure, uh, further, further questions from the board? Okay, he hearing none, I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second, this is Jim Boyle. Seconded by Mr. Boyle. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Item approved. Next item. Thank you. Item BC 2020-513, County Prosecutor's Office, submitting an amendment to a contract with Millennium Investor Group 5, LLC, for lease of space for the period August 1st, 2011 through July 31st, 2020, to extend the time period to July 31st, 2021, to modify the terms to include a provision for cleaning requirements in response to COVID-19 as set forth by the Center for Disease Control and the Ohio Department of Health. It's effective August 1st, 2020, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $24,305.90. Hi, uh, this is Mark Greenfield. I'm an assistant prosecuting attorney uh, with Cuyahoga County. I'm here today to present to the Board of Control. So as I just listened carefully to, this is a request for a one-year extension of a lease for the for the offices of the internet crimes against children task force task force excuse me um it's an existing uh, right to uh, to extend um it is for the it is for the existing right of one year the rent um remains the same as it did last year thanks to the negotiation um savvy of uh, John Myers, who I believe is on this call. And um, we decided we were trying to actually move uh, to a space that is better, but notwithstanding um, yeoman efforts by all concerned, including uh, John Myers, um, we were not able to get that space available prior to our needing to renew the lease. Uh, term and so we're asking for uh, the board to approve the one-year extension. The the um, I did get a couple of questions on this, which I certainly endeavored to answer. Um, this is really an extension, not there's a mention, this express mention of COVID, but that's already been covered and will can Cleveland is uh, cleaning has already been covered by the landlord and will. Um, continue to be um, the responsibility uh, of the landlord, uh, even given the additional requirements of COVID. So I would ask that um, this board approve the one-year extension through August, July 31st. And if anybody has a question, because I got this question from Council um, Person Baker last year, why are we why aren't we in a county building? Uh, why are we renting and leasing? I, to clarify or to wrap this back around, I mentioned earlier in this my too long-winded speech um, is that we did try to move but and not spend the money, but the space simply wasn't available. And Mr. Myers on that point tried to actually negotiate a shorter period of time um, you know, four months, six months, it kept getting longer. Then it finally got to the point where we knew it wasn't going to be feasible and that we, we extended, uh, we um, exercised our option for the year. Thank you, Mark. Is there any questions from the board on this item? Uh, just one question, Nan Baker, and sure. I appreciate the explanation that answers a lot of questions. 
The 8-1-2020, are they waiting for their August rent? They are waiting for their six months. We pay them in half-year increments. And so I remember two years ago when I did this for the first time, I think it was two years ago, maybe it was three, the county executive said, well, we'd like you to start earlier next year so we're not behind the dates. The following year I did start earlier. It worked out great. This year I wanted to start even earlier, but for the reasons I just mentioned about trying to negotiate something a little different, we couldn't start earlier because we didn't know we were going to actually start at all. So long, very long answer. Now I'm going to end the answer, and that is they are waiting for their first half year's check, which is approximately $12,152. $0.45. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I was going to say that, but I knew you'd finish for me. I appreciate the answer. It's a good explanation. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? Just briefly, this is Jim Boyle. Mr. Boyle, good day. Hey, good day to you. So on the opportunity to move, is it based on finding a new space in dollars? I mean, have you guys outgrown the facility you're in now? I guess I'm more looking at the long-term viability of an obviously important aspect of the county prosecutor's office. I mean, do you need more physical space, or is it just that you guys are looking for an economy situation? Okay, so on this call are two people, one I've referenced, two people that are going to help support me here, John Myers in real estate and Dave Fattari in ICAC. So either one at their discretion may take that question if I may defer to them. Thanks, Mark. This is John Myers. Good morning, board. Just briefly, Jim, to answer your question, we are scheduled to move within county-owned space, and it just we couldn't get it done on the time frame that we had hoped. So in addition, the prosecutor's office took advantage of this time to look at some other space needs that had from some other agencies as well to see if we could address those needs and change needs with this move. So I think we've accomplished that, and at the end of this lease term, I hope to have that all moved and effectuated before next August 1st. All right. Fantastic, and thank you, John. Nice work. Thanks. Okay. Hearing no further questions, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second Nan Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Item BC 2020-514, Office of the Clerk of Courts, recommending an award on a purchase order to the United States Postal Service in the amount not to exceed $300,000 for the purchase of refill postage for the period September 8, 2020 through November 30, 2020, in accordance with Civil Rule Number 4 of the Ohio Rules of Civil Procedures. Good morning. Mike Smotek with the Clerk of Courts Office. This is to refill our postage meter account with the United States Postal Service, which will allow us to fulfill our statutory requirements for mailing summons, complaints, notices, stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the board on this item? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second. This is Dale. Se seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Moving on to the consent agenda, item numbers BC 2020-515 through 520. I know there's a few there, so if any of the board members have any questions on any of those items, I'll give you a moment or two to speak out.
I know there were some questions on 516, 517, and 518. Hopefully they were answered. If not, we can delve into them a little more. Uh, this is Nan Baker. I'm, I'm sorry to delay. I'm just reading over. No, that's fine. Take <laughs> your time. No. Just quite a few here, so we're in um, no hurry. Yes. So uh, it's just in reading on 517, uh, the settlement. Funding sources um, indicate that the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services and Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health Services are being paid, let's see, by the grant. But in reading the um, explanation, it looks like it's only the OMHAS that is being paid for the grant. Am I correct in that? Good morning. <clears throat> Marty Murphy for the Practice Planning Board. This is a grant that the Corrections Planning Board is receiving from the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Mm -hmm. uh, the Adams Board is not involved in it at all, and the funds are coming from the state to the county, not the other way around. State to the county. So why is the Adams Board listed as a funding source? I don't believe it should be. It should say Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services or and Drug Addiction Services. This is Andrea. Uh Clerk of the Board, Marty, it was listed in your uh, backup information, your item detail under the funding source. Uh, uh, if, if that's the case, it was an error by staff and task that had put the data that said alcohol and drug as well. Okay, so the... percent Ohio Department of Alcohol, Drug Addiction, Mental Health Services. The uh, It may be because... Uh, it was cut and paste from a couple years ago when the state would give the money to the local board and then the local board would give it to to the county and they made it they simplified it for the tasks across the country or across the state by simply giving it direct okay well that that clarifies that I appreciate it thank you any additional questions on any of these items from the board you know, if I may just follow up with that, um, the Adams Board, because it has been given those funds in the past, are they anticipating any additional funds uh, from this grant, or do we reimburse them for the difference? How do they make up for what they typically used to get? They didn't. They didn't get anything. It was 100% passed through, and just an extra step for it to okay. go to the Adams before it came to pass. Okay, so nothing on the Adams board that they're anticipating getting anything through the county to make up for what we got 100% paid for by the state. That's correct. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, last call for any other uh, questions on any of the items? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve today's consent agenda items uh, as amended, especially on uh, 2020 517. We'll remove that second funding source. Uh, do I have a second? Say aye, Miller. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. Aye. As amended, yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's uh, approved as amended. Moving on. We're moving on to other business. This is listed on the printed agenda on page number seven. We have one time sensitive mission critical item, item BC 2020-521, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Children and Family Services, recommending an award on requisition 2935 to Raven House in the amount not to exceed $24,999.99 for emergency placement services, and it's for the period July 9th, 2020 through October 9th, 2020. Good morning, Paul Porter, Health and Human Services on behalf of the Division of Children and Family Services. This is a companion item to a mission critical placement that was approved at the August 24th Board of Control meeting. 
but I think because it was a placement at the same agency, there was confusion about whether there needed to be one or two of those. There does need to be two. Uh, so this one is for the placement of a 17-year-old female um, who was AWOL from a different facility and was brought to DCFS by the police uh, and then was able to be placed at this Raven House placement. Okay, thank you, Paul. I am going to amend today's agenda. Oh no, it's on today's agenda. Ah, see that? My old habits. Uh, are there any questions for Paul on this item? Hearing no questions, I will make a motion to approve a uh, time sensitive item, um, item number 2020-521. Do I have a second? Second. Jim Boyle. Seconded by Mr. Boyle. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's approved. Moving on. There in, there's no other business. Is there any public comment at this time? No public comment, going once, twice. Okay, I will therefore make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second, this is Dale. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.